Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Our project today is just going to be a really nice little travel bag or, or a cosmetic bag. Look, as with any bag, you can do whatever you like with it. It's going to have a nice contrast uh, webbing on, around the sides and a couple of handles. It's going to be very boxy. Come along and I'll show you how to make this bag up. It doesn't take that long. Okay, here's what we need. This is my lining fabric and it is 16 by 21 inches and we've just got one piece of that and our main fabric or the outer fabric is also 16 by 21 inches. I'm using a lightweight fusible pallon so any type of fusible wadding or pallon is suitable for this and this is 15 inches by 20 inches. Then I have a zip that is 12 inches long and I've got two sliders that you can get away with one if that's all you've got and I'm using a number five zip here. For my contrast I've got a couple of bits of strapping or webbing. These are all one inch wide. I've got two pieces that are 16 inches wide so one inch by 16 inches. If you don't have access to webbing or strapping then as a contrast, get yourself a piece of fabric that is four inches wide, folded in half twice until you can get it to one inch. And then you can cut it to the 16 inch length. If you sew to sell, then find the center of your 16 inch piece of webbing, fold it in half and place your label in the center there. I did actually try this with my metal label. It looks a lot better with my fabric one though. I think it just stands out a little bit better. So fabric label it is for myself and then for the handles we need two pieces of the same kind of strapping or webbing or four inch piece of fabric if that's what you choose to use. We need two pieces that are 19 inches in length. This is my main fabric. I'm using an upholstery fabric here. You can use a quilting cotton, a duck or denim. It really doesn't matter what fabric you use as long as it's not stretchy. And I've taken my main fabric and fused my pallon onto the wrong side of the fabric. The pallon is half an inch shorter all the way around. So I've just marked a line around there so that you can see where the actual pallon is. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do in this project is cut out our corners for the boxing. Quite often I'll do that at the end of my project, but this time around we're going to do it at the beginning. So at the top edge, from the outside edge of the fabric, not the pallon, we're going to measure two inches. And from the top we come out as well, two inches. And we'll do the same on the other side. Then we can fold the fabric in half. So we'll fold this in half right side together, line up those edges at the top there. I'll pop a couple of clips in place just to keep that secure. And on the bottom here, we're going to come in two inches from the side. And because we don't have a seam at the bottom edge, we're going to come up one and a half inches. So at the moment what we've got at the top edge, we've got a two inch boxed corner, we've got two inches from the outside edge here and one and a half inches from the folded edge here. Before we cut that, I'm going to take my lining and I'll fold that in half the same way and I'm going to place my fabric directly over the top, line up all the edges and I'll cut this out all at once rather than having to do everything twice. So I've got all my layers lined up properly and we can go and cut out all these corners. Open this out and this is how your pattern is going to look now and your lining will be the same. We now need to find the center. So we've got our long section along here fold this in half and mark the center at both ends then we can come to the box corner section here 
we're going to make a mark at one and a half inches from the top and we'll make a couple of marks here because we need to line up our webbing We can run that line all the way along. And we'll repeat for the other side. So we're going to come down one and a half inches. We can draw that line all the way across. And then we're going to take our short pieces of webbing and place that over that line. Now it's important that you line this webbing up nice and straight and that the distance from the top down is exactly the same at this end as it is on the other end. We'll put this one in place first so pin the first one in place then turn it around and grab your other webbing and place that along that edge as well So now that you have your webbing in place along here or your contrast fabric, we need to make sure that these edges line up because when we put the bag together, these side seams are going to match up and you want to have them nice and straight. Fold the fabric in half and line up the top edge of your fabric and just make sure that the webbing or the fabric that you've got here is lining up, that it's not off like that. You wanna have that nice and straight on the edge if it's not straight, then just go and reposition the fabric so that it lines up at the top edge here and then the webbing lines up as well. And be sure to measure the other side as well. So it's very easy to be off square by just a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch and it makes all the difference. So as long as that lines up nice and straight and this side lines up straight, you'll be okay. Now, before we sew that, in position we need to place our handles on as well so we've got our center marked here and i'm going to measure two inches from the center on each side and my handle is going to be positioned along there so the raw edge of my handle needs to go underneath this piece of webbing slide that underneath line it up at the two inches and then just push the raw edge back up underneath so that it's tucked away underneath your webbing and then pin that in place. Take the other side, bring that around. We've got our two inches, tuck that in again on this side, line it up with that two inch line and then push the webbing back up so that it sits underneath this section. So we can take this to the machine in a minute. We can sew all the way down along the long edges of this section here. And if you want to, you can actually go and do a cross along here as well. Come around to the other side and we will do the same again. From the center, we'll measure out two inches on either side and we'll place the other handle underneath as well. We'll take this to the machine now and sew all the way down the long edges of the black strips and we'll box the section where the handles meet. I'm going to go over the section where the handle meets, go over that, then I'm going to come down across and up and then across again. And then I'll continue on until I get to the next handle and I'll do the same thing. And then I'll just zip down the other side. So that side's done. And before I uh, put the next side on, I'm just going to double check that this tape is in the same position as the one that's pinned on the other side. If, it's, if anything needs moving, I can do that now. So I've checked my measurements and everything seems to be okay. Okay, we've got our handles in place. And before you do anything else, go and double check that they do line up properly.
properly on each end as well. Once you're happy with that, you can move your handle out of the way and we'll grab our zip, open that up and we're going to take the teeth, have that faced toward me and the straight edge along the top there. And you can pin or clip it in place. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my tape. There are many reasons for using the tape, not to mention the pins and clips being bulky. One of the best reasons for using the tape is with the lining, when you're sewing that down, it has a tendency to shift. This fabric here is okay because there's a lot of structure in it, but the lining fabric is usually so much thinner, or it is in this case anyway, that it'll actually shift when I'm sewing the three layers together. Place the zip over the top. Now I've intentionally cut my zipper tape a little bit longer so I've got a 12 inch opening here my tape is about 13 inches I can place the other one down as well and take the other one and place that face down as well then we can take some more tape place that over the top of your zip flip it around do the same at this end and just scratch the corner so that you can easily peel the paper away and take your lining fabric and place that right side down so you want the pretty side or the printed side faced down over the top and we'll line up these side edges and the top edge and turn that around and we'll grab the other side of the lining and we'll position that down as well so we're going to take this back to the machine now we're going to sew along this edge here and along this edge here to secure our zipper tape. And we're going to put our zipper foot on when we do that as well. Then we'll turn the whole thing the right way around and we will top stitch those two zips down. Just so close to the edge of the zipper teeth here. And we'll do the same on the other side. With the regular foot back on, turn everything the right way around and then separate the lining and the main fabric push them or pull them away from the zip and then we can top stitch because i've got a black zip and webbing and handles i'm actually going to top stitch in this in black it just has a nice contrast and you know i tell you that this is just a nice contrast or a design feature but really i'm just too lazy to change my thread but it's at this point if you've got things like this happening all blacks or all blues for example I do like to do the same color thread to match whatever my contrast is I'll make a whole batch of bags exactly the same way and then I'll change my thread when I'm doing the next section for all of my bags just helps save a lot of time and we'll repeat for the other side With that done, we can now place our two zipper sliders on. And as I said, if you've only got the one, that's fine. You can make this bag with just one slider. I'm going to place the curved edge facing me. And I'll pull this zip all the way across until that's closed. And then I'll open this out again and pop that zip on again and then I'll come from the other side so I've got this side here the curved edge is facing that way and on this side I've got the curved edge of the zip facing toward me again open it out and there we have our two sliders now we can turn this inside out to so bring the lining away from the main fabric and turn the main inside out as well. Be careful not to pop the zip open. And here is when we find out if our strapping or webbing lines up. So we want to line up the boxed corners at the top and at the bottom section. So I've put a pin in just on either side of the webbing that keeps that nice and 
secure here so that it doesn't shift whilst you're sewing. The top edges have lined up here on the boxed corner and we can come along to the other side and line this up as well. Keep your handles well inside. So we've got this nicely lined up here, the most important part being the webbing and of course the boxed corners on the top and the bottom. Flip it around and we'll line up the lining as well. Now the lining section, we need to keep one side partially open. And we're also using a half inch seam allowance on this project. So you may have uh, figured that out because we've actually got our wadding half an inch smaller on all the way around, which is our seam allowance. So I'm going to keep this side open by about three inches and then I'll pin the other side and the other side can be closed up completely. So let's take this to the machine now. We'll sew along here. So where the pallen ends, and you can see that blue line, that's my stitching line. It's my half inch seam allowance. I'll sew this one twice and back stitch over this section here. Likewise on this end. And when I get to this side of the lining, I'm going to sew from here to here backstitch and here to here and backstitch as well. Keep that open and we'll sew this one closed. And remember I'm doing a half inch seam allowance. And on the main I want to pay particular attention to lining up where the webbing is. And I'll do the same for this side. Okay, with the side edges sewn up on lining and main, we can now trim off any excess. So I'm just going to trim off the sides of the um, webbing. And if you prefer to have a smaller seam allowance, you can cut that down too. The reason why I double stitch the main fabric is because I'm using upholstery fabric. It's a lot thicker and I always just like to give it a little bit of extra strength because it's such a heavy weight fabric. And I am just using regular Goodman sewing thread. So unless you're going to be using a nice heavy weight thread suitable for upholstery fabric, you're better off just double stitching it. And I don't want to have to go to the expense of buying any extra threads. So I'm just pressing the seam open here and the reason I'm doing that is because there's so much thickness in the um, webbing on the side there and you can see how that's nicely lined up. My first one wasn't quite so successful, I had to unpick it. So open that out, it'll just help everything sit a little bit better. It's not so important for the lining and because we've cut our pallen or wadding half an inch shorter all the way around, this will actually sit a lot better. We don't have as much bulk in our seams. So find the center here and we'll line up the center of the folded section with the seam here and you can clip your edges together. I might just remind you all now that because we've got a zip in here, we want to make sure that we open it out. Find your way in there. We should have done that before, but because I've got two zips in here, it's actually going to be a little bit easier. I can just open that out. You want to make sure that you've got your zip open at least halfway, if not more. So before we close up the bag, we'll open that out. I'm always forgetting that. And we'll repeat that for this side. Just pinch the corners out, line up that seam there and we can clip that one in place as well and we'll repeat that for the lining. The lining you don't have to open the seam, you can just press that to whichever side it wants to go. Unless you're using a heavier weight fabric, if you're using something heavier then open your seams out. And the section where the zip is, we'll open that out and we want to be careful that we don't pull our zip apart. Line up the seam along the center of your zip here
and then take the lining and we're going to line that up on this on the zip as well fold that open and this seam here we will line up with the center of the zip and we'll clip all of those layers together and so when we take this to the machine we will sew through the lining the zip and the uh, outside fabric we'll repeat on the other end open out your mane again place it over the top of your zip and line up that lining again with the zip and we can take this to the machine and sew all the way along there as well because i'm sewing my lining and my zip and the main all together i'm going to go over that whole section twice so we'll take this back to the machine we'll sew our corners here these corners and this section as well now when i make these kinds of bags i will often do my boxing separately if you want to do them together you can take this section here and bring that up to this section here and clip all of those layers together and sew them down in one go as well this speeds up the process so if you're doing batch sewing this makes the process a whole lot quicker you just bring all these layers together sew it together and at this side here you will do the same thing you'll take the bottom of your mane, the bottom of your lining, bring them together, sew them all together all at the same time. But for today I'm going to just do them as I've just shown you here. We'll, we'll box our corners separately. So backstitch at the beginning, I'll backstitch over the seam as well and at the end but then I'll go and stitch this again. And now that I've done the bottom on the main and the lining, it's time to sew all of these layers together with the zip, the main, the lining, all in one go. When I go over the zipper area, I'll go forward, back and forward again. And even though I do have a needle large enough to accommodate what I'm doing, I don't like to go too fast over it. Okay, this is all finished now. All we need to do is turn the bag the right way around. But first of all, I'm going to trim off the excess zip and anything else that looks a little bit untidy. And then we can find our opening and we can turn everything the right way around. So stick your hand in all the way to the main and just grab that and pull the main part of your bag out through your lining. And then just poke out all of your corners. And I've got my hand on the inside there. I'm just going to finger press the side seams open one more time same on the other side and then we'll push out the corners on the top edge as well and once you're happy with all of that go back to your lining on the side here and just pinch the opening pull it taut the opening will want to fold in together and you can whip stitch this by hand or sew it closed by machine. I'm just going to sew that very close to the edge. So there we go, completely finished. We've got a nice little carry bag here. This would make a great traveling carry-on bag, even your cosmetics, absolutely anything. So we've got the two zips here. One is more than adequate if, you've, if that's all you've got and plenty of room on the inside. 
You could even add a couple of pockets in this as well if you wanted to. Can I just say I have had an awesome day in my sewing room today. We've had a few weeks of disruptions, bathroom renovations and all sorts of things happening. This is the first day I've been at home uninterrupted for a long time and I've managed to get two projects done and this is one of them. So how do you like it? This is the bag that we've done today using the fusible pallon and using upholstery fabric as well. This one I did yesterday at work. This is also upholstery fabric or furnishing fabric. Uh, it's got a velvety feel to it. It's a really nice fabric and I think the black and red looks amazing together. Exactly the same bag, same construction. And the only thing that is different is the size. So we've used exactly the same length of fabric for both bags. I've just used two different widths where this one was a 16 inch wide fabric. This one was done with a 12 inch wide fabric. So you can make these in any size that you like. Boxing's completely up to you. You can make this taller, narrower, shorter, fatter, whatever you like with the boxing. But this is a great little bag. You can see that I've put my labels on here. I would have liked to have put my metal tags on. They just didn't look right with it. I'm going to sell these in the shop. When you factor in all the cutting and measuring and sewing and all of that, they take just over half an hour to make. When I make some more, I think I'm going to price them out at $45 each. I think they're a nice enough bag that I can do that. So that will take into account the costs that I did have associated with my bag, the handles, the zips, and the pallon on the inside. The fabric was free like it usually is. And this one here, I didn't actually use any stabilizer in this one, so it's, it doesn't look as structured. I'm probably going to put this in the shop for about $35. I just don't think it's as nice. I love the colour, but I just don't think it's constructed very well, only because it doesn't have enough stabiliser in it. So there is a bit of a difference between a bag with structure and one without. This will look even better if I had have gone and used uh, Paltex or Decaville. That would give it a really nice stiffness to the bag. That would make it very rigid. It'll just sit up nicely by itself. I'm happy enough with them as they are. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.